baby. We gotta win this one. Out the jump, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. Here we go. This is about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. They get the dough down. Okay, meet at the quarterback. Welcome to the Audible presented by 3M. My name is Gabe Henderson, that's Tatum Everett. And uh, today we have the special privilege of being joined by, in my opinion, the best fullback in the NFL, and then the best, the best kick returner in the NFL, Mr. CJ Ham and Mr. Kane Wangwu. Uh, guys, thank you for joining us, uh, first and foremost. I was doing some research just on this show, right? So this is the 14th edition of the show, the 14th episode of the show. And um, out of the 14 episodes, we've had eight different start times. So whether it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday or <laughs> one o'clock or eight o'clock or four o'clock, this, this show, The Audible, is literally taking on the name, what the, the show has been so far. But for you guys, you guys have been in the thick of this thing, different schedule almost every other week. How has this season been for you guys? It's been good. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. You got you to roll with the punches. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the, our, our staff and everybody does a great job of just making sure we're uh, – now sticking to a schedule, and uh, you know when we have a short week like this, uh, you kind of have to flip some days around and uh, you know get get things rolling. Yeah, I know. Last time the you guys lost, you had the short week after. What is it like to have another short week after what happened on Sunday, Kanae? Uh, yeah, I just think it's just part of the NFL. You know, just having short weeks, playing on Thursdays, on Mondays, Sundays, playing in London. You know, and it's for us. Just we just got to stick to our you know our details, fundamentals. You know, we got. Uh, Great people making our schedule, and we just got to trust them. Got to trust them. And you, uh, you just talked about details. And uh, a lot of people know if you watch this show, we start the show off with the icebreaker. And it's uh, a, a few details about the two of you. So, uh, Kanae, we're, we're, we're going to start. No, CJ, we're going to start with you. We have mm. you pull over your card, turn around your cue card, yeah, right there. read it off to our radio audience. And, Kanae, it's up to you to figure out which two sentences are true and which one is a lie. As Ooh. Kanae sits up in his chair and rubs okay. his yeah. hands. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. So first, uh, before trying out for the Vikings in 2016, I had, I had considered becoming a teacher. Uh, two, uh, I competed in snowboarding as a kid until I was in eighth grade. Um, and uh, during my junior year of college, I set a school record in, in the weighted throw at a track and field event. Okay, okay. I'm gonna say the lie is the teacher. And <laughs> really? <laughs> really? That was my uh, that that was my major. I graduated. I mean, I got a degree in, in teaching, and okay. I was student teaching actually when I when wow. I got the call to um, come try out for the Vikings. So you, it was a snowboarding. That's a lie. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. What Even though is it skateboarding? Skateboarding. I mean, but I did snowboard too. So you competed in it too? No, I wouldn't say. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, okay, okay. Okay. but I did snowboard. Dude, so, so snowboarding and skateboarding? Yeah. Man, that yeah. is like the true <laughs> definition of a Minnesotan. Straight up <laughs> is what it is. I kind of, I honestly did just a little bit of everything. Just tried to have fun, played outside a lot. So many talents. Yeah. Uh, if you had gone to the teaching route, what would you? Is there a grade level or a certain <laughs> subject that you were wanted to pursue? Uh, PE, PE and health. <laughs> so Be a coach? Like, uh, probably. It probably would have happened too. So, yeah, I was uh, at the time I got the tryout. I was uh, student teaching at uh, Lincoln High School in Sioux Falls. Oh wow. But my last question for you before we get to Kanae is uh, multiple sports in college. You did track and field and you played football. W what were some pros and cons of playing two sports in college? I mean, the pros was I, I love track. Mm. Um, you know, I did. I was I was throwing. Uh, you know, started throwing in like middle school, sixth grade, and then did it, did it my entire life. And, uh, wow. I ran a little bit, just wasn't that fast, so I just kind of <laughs> stuck to the stu stu stuck to throwing objects. And um, uh, for me. It was it was it was a nice uh, just change up, you know. Um, you obviously, go to go I, I go to college to play to play football, uh, get a scholarship to play football. Um, but you know the, the the track team had one thrower on the team who was who, who was happened to be happened to be a player as well, and you know I just showed the interest in it, and they took me in, and um, it was it was a super nice change up in the, in the off season to not have to do the all the 5 a.m. Uh, football workouts, <laughs> um, but be able to compete. No, uh, for real, but be able to compete in something else, it, it was awesome. I saw you shaking your head when he said he loves track. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you feel the same oh, yeah, way yeah, about yeah. it. I have the same sentiment. Yeah, in high school, um, for me, I just love the competitive nature of it. You know, I did a lot of events like high jump, long jump, and then uh, all the relays. But my favorite event was high jump. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I once stayed in high jump. And uh, just for me, it was just like, 
just me and the bar, you know? It's just like my only opponent was myself. So it was just like something I could really challenge myself in. Can I your turn? All right, let's see it, let's see it. <laughs> I got this, boy. Okay. I probably knew that was a thing and I... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, first one, I finished my college career as Iowa State's all-time leader in punt return yards. <laughs> <laughs> Second one, for every NFL row game, I must have a Reese's peanut butter cup with me. Hmm. See, uh, one of my goals is to save up my NFL money and help my family start an auto body shop. Hmm. Mm. I mean, those all three are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I know you ain't, I know you ain't catching no punts. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely wasn't my thing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a whole nother monster. So <laughs> why not? Uh, it was just, it was different. Like even, even for me, like starting off my career at Iowa State, I always tell people like, I just wanted to find a role mm -hmm. on that team. And uh, my coach, my running back coach at the time, he was like, you just catch kicks. So I was like, okay. So I caught like 50 kicks before, like before, after practice and found my way being the kick returner. But like, if you told me to catch punts, I'm probably just going to catch punts though. <laughs> no, I feel that. I saw you kind of gave it away a little, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You got in with the little laugh about the Reese's. I'd asked him that one time before. Yeah, I didn't know that. Was cool. Love yeah. candy. Love candy. I do. Is it candy I, I in general or just Reese's? Reese's? Oh, I mean, see, I really do love like gummy type candies. Yes, so sir. like something about Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay. Something you, you, about you, you like dots, right? I love dots. Do you want to know something me, really dots. weird yeah. about Gabe? Here we go. Here we go. He hates mm. chocolate and yeah. peanut butter. Yeah. Really? I don't it eat won't either. eat it together. We'll I mind blown when I found out. Only chocolate that I eat is a Snickers bar. Okay. And the only peanut butter I mm. eat is if it's a PB and J. I hate the both of them together. Mm. And but I aren't hate. there peanuts in Snickers? Yeah, but it, yeah. <laughs> it's like a marriage. <laughs> <Chocolate> <laughs> you can, but here's the thing: you can, get it, better. you can get it with almonds. <laughs> Uh, Those are the better. That's the better flavor. Uh, I've never, I've never Snickers had that. almond. I never had that one. That's we all stuff. can't be perfect. No, but um, you know, <laughs> for the people who do like chocolate and peanut butter, uh, good luck to you guys. Oh, you can so have good. all of my chocolate and peanut butter. But at the same time, a kick returner, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. That's your thing. That's my thing. What are some qualities that make up a good kick returner just on, on all levels? Uh, for me, I think one is just trusting your blocks. You know, it, it, it looks it looks crazy out there with just people running by and all that, but like if you trust the people in front of you, that is an aspect that will help at being a good kick returner. And another thing for me is it's not like uh, stopping your feet. Mm -hmm. So just running through like arm tackles, because a lot of the times, you know, you can't ask a guy to block someone running full speed for three seconds or something like that. Like there's gonna be like an arm tackle like that. So you just gotta trust your blockers and then, you know, just run full speed, honestly. This is the Audible. I'm Tatum Everett. This is Gabe Henderson. We're alongside CJ Ham and Kanae Wong Wu. And obviously the special teams coordinator changed this offseason. One of the things I thought was kind of interesting that Matt Daniels introduced were bond, things to bond you guys together, to kind of galvanize you as a group. And the hats <laughs> have been confusing me for a few weeks now. I, I, I tried to figure it out before I asked him. I was like, does it mean St. Thomas? Like, what does it mean? I get that a but lot. the ST <laughs> hat, uh, when he introduced that to you, what's the story behind those? Oh uh, yeah, I mean it was just one um, one day in, in 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 our Saturday morning, you know, Saturday night meeting. He just had this box of hats and said, "Hey, here's these hats. Uh, you know, I got this made for you know all the guys. Um, you know, and obviously it says ST on there, which." Often people ask me, oh, is that a St. Thomas hat? And I'm like, <laughs> I would Thomas. wear a St. Thomas hat, but no, it's not. Uh, special teams, but uh, on the side of it, it says Ubuntu. Um, it's an African proverb. It means uh, I am because we are. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of just uh, been the motto of our, of our special teams unit, of uh, just doing it, uh, doing, doing it for our brother, do, doing it for the person next to you. Um, you know, they're going to push you. They're going to make you better. Um, you know, that's kind of just been who, who we are all season. Kane, I know you were the 2020 uh, Big 12 Scholar of the Year, mm, right? Yeah. And, just understanding that education means something right to you and that, your yeah. family, right? Like, would you say that that accomplishment was the, the one of the best rewards that you've given your family? Oh, what? My mom was going through <laughs> the roof when she saw that. <laughs> Blowing up the family group chat, but uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think uh, for me, yeah, coming into college, it was definitely your degree is the most important part, you know? And for me, I wanted to challenge myself. I went to Iowa State. Got my bachelor's and master or a bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering, and that was like one of my greatest accomplishments. Wow, you know? that's tough. It was tough, like doing football and engineering as a freshman. Uh, I was struggling, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of great resources. Had many teammates doing engineering too, so uh, 
I stuck it through, and then yeah, I'm happy I got the paper. Yeah, it's just, just a little bit harder than a, <laughs> than a PE and health degree. It has education, if that helps. <laughs> this is all subjective, guys. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, my, my whole family are engineers. That's, oh, that's wow. like no joke. You have to be so good at math and science and all the analytic stuff. Do you kind of, is that how your brain functions? Are you more on that side of the spectrum? Oh, yeah, for sure. For me, when it comes to writing essays and all that, like, I'll get three sentences in. I say, it's, it's a good for a paragraph, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, something about doing equations, solving problems like that, it's just natural. And, you know, honestly, I, like, I get a little enjoyment out of doing it. So uh, it was just a natural pathway for me to just go the engineering route. That's awesome. And, uh, CJ, I know education means a lot to you also. Uh, it was recently announced that you have the HAM Scholarship Fund now, the CJ HAM Scholarship Fund. What is that, and what was the initiative and purpose behind that? Yeah, um, so yes, yeah, the HAM, HAM Family Scholarship, okay. and um, we actually just had an event for it last night, and you know, it was actually a couple years ago when, uh, when all the things had happened with, with George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd. And uh, you know, I do, a, I do a youth camp in, in Duluth every single year, and we always donate, donate the proceeds to uh, uh, you know, in, in some, some organization that, that we choose. And uh, you know, this year we we're, were just thinking, and my wife came up with the idea of like, hey, let's let's see if we can start a diversity scholarship um, in the Duluth area. Mm. Um, you know, like what can we do to help how how we're all feeling right now? You know, I was I was struggling. My my, my wife was struggling uh, just with all the all the things that were just going on around the world. And uh, you know, that was something actionable that 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 we could do. And uh, you know, we brought it to our team. Uh, we brought it to our team and uh, they were able to make it come into fruition and uh, yesterday we, we had an event for it and we've, we've raised the funds, we've donated enough uh, and now it's a, it's a scholarship that will run pretty much you know forever now and there, awesome. will be, there will be students every single year who can apply for it and will be uh, rewarded that scholarship. That's amazing. When, when, is that coming up soon when they can do those? Yeah, things? so 2023 will, will be the first recipients. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That'll be a neat moment. This holiday season is upon us, and if you want to make a difference in someone's life this season, text SKOL to 24365 and donate $25. Register to volunteer or give online at www.salvationarmynorth.org slash Vikings. We'll be right back with more of The Audible presented by 3M right after this. Welcome back to the Audible presented by 3M. I'm Gabe Henderson, that is Tatum Everett. And uh, joining us for another segment is CJ Ham and Mr. Kane Wangu. And guys, uh, thank you again for joining us. I know I said that the first episode, I mean the first segment of the show, but I wanna start this segment off by, by asking, right? Like touchdowns for fans, right? When you guys score means a little bit different because like it's not usually like a long drive or, you know, JJ or Dalvin scoring a touchdown. CJ, it's like, oh my gosh, like CJ Ham just scored a touchdown? That's crazy. <laughs> and then Kane, we, like when you score, it's just like a game-changing play. Mm -hmm. For you guys, what does that feel like? And, and are there any, uh, does one touchdown different from, from, from the other that you guys have had in your career? For me, obviously, the, the, my, my first one back in 2017 was, was, re was really special. Um, you know, kept that ball and kind of a surreal, surreal moment. I just scored a touchdown in the NFL. I had scored in the preseason a couple times, and no, that was awesome too. But to score, to score in the regular season was was really special. Um, but I mean, for me now, it's uh, you know, to score a touchdown means a lot. Like it's it, it doesn't doesn't happen often. Um, but I was I was glad I was able to get into the end zone this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I honestly get even more excited when. You know, I, I help somebody on our team score a touchdown or when my dog Kane is running down the <laughs> sideline, that's like that's probably one of the happiest moments uh, you know, that that I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, uh it's uh it's a uh, it's like a rush of emotion, you know. My first touchdown, um, I was coming off an injury, came back uh like halfway through that season and uh it was like my second return ever, I think, something like that. Mm. And uh, yeah, like I didn't even know what to do. I just threw the ball in there, you know? <laughs> and then uh, I think someone grabbed the ball. But uh, yeah, it's just a special, like energetic moment, like scoring a kick return touchdown. You know, I keep all those balls, you know, like one day, <laughs> you know, my son will look at it and say, oh, you <laughs> scored this in 2022? Like, yeah, I did, I did. But uh, no, it's just like, yeah, those, they're just like so energetic, you know, like a kick return touchdown. It's like, it can change the momentum of the game mm. for real. Yeah, you just mentioned your son, and obviously CJ, you're a father of three. I mean, the bond that you guys have probably, and I'm assuming obviously, it, it, 
you're able to talk about those like dad things about being a father. Um, how was it, I guess, maybe for you, Kine, knowing that you were a newer father to be able to lean on CJ or even if you did? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I remember the moment, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I had to. You just made CJ, CJ seem yeah. so old. <laughs> and it's all good. It's no, like good. definitely, just like, uh, <laughs> it's fine, guys. like anything, like when it comes to like nap times or like uh, feeding, reading books, you know, milestones, like child services, I always lean on CJ, you know, he's a great father, great father figure in this whole organization. And it's just like, you know, honestly, I'm blessed to have someone in the room that I can lean on, like, you know, just for things when it comes to that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, being a father, is just uh, exciting. It's like, just like a new thing. I'm learning things every single week, you know, new milestones, new faces, new like sounds <laughs> he's making, but uh, it's just been amazing for me and my family. For, for you guys, what has, what you know, fatherhood taught you guys? I mean, obviously, from everybody who is a is a parent knows uh, fatherhood or parenthood teaches you patience. Mm. Uh, you truly learn what it means to be patient when you uh, when when you bring when you when you bring little ones into the world. Um, but really, um, my children have taught me not not to take anything for granted. Um, you know, life is life is so precious. Um, it's so short. Um, kids grow up so fast. Um, you know, I already have a six-year-old. My daughter just turned four. She's um, six, bro. And she's six. She's in first grade. Was, yeah, that's with, no with, more kindergarten. With all all the attitude in the world, <laughs> life happens so fast. Um, so just try to cherish every single moment and to just truly not take anything for granted in life. Um, you know, you know, football, being a parent, being a, being a friend, being a brother, uh, whatever whatever that is, just don't take it for granted. Yeah, for me, it was definitely patience, you know, it's just, <laughs> I'm not going to be right the first time, you know, it's going to yeah. take multiple times, you know, understanding what I need to do. And like, for me, like every day I come home, it's just like, I don't want to take those days for granted, you know, like learning or being with my son and my family. It's just, it is a precious thing that like, you don't realize like time's flying by, like my son's 10 months now and I can right. remember when we were in the NICU wow. with him. So uh, yeah, it's just like for me, I'm just taking every day, day by day and just learning like ways to connect with my son. You mentioned that Caleb was in the NICU mm -hmm. for a while and, and that was a cause that you chose for your cleats this yeah. year. Um, what was the reaction or the, or the, the feedback that you got from, I guess, Vikings fans or NFL football fans who mm -hmm. saw that you, you picked that and heard about your story. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really uh, special because I had like, you know, fans, sometimes they DM you, but sometimes, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, no, sometimes they're like very, that sounds like a show, by the very way, uh, <laughs> like detailed, you know, stories about their children being in the NICU and, um, you know, just reading those stories and then sending it to my girlfriend, Catlin. It's just like, you know, it's, uh, it was very special to know that like, you know, we, we're not alone through this situation and like to shed light on something like that is just really special for me. That's awesome. We're, we're talking to Kane Wangwu and uh, CJ Ham right here on the Audible and um, CJ, understanding, I mean, you, you've experienced an NFC North championship. Kane, you, you haven't. Hopefully we can get one this, this week, but getting one this week in front of your hometown fans, in front of your family. I'm, I think your son goes to the game now, Kanae. Yeah. What, what would that mean? <laughs> it would be awesome, obviously. I, I've, got, I've gotten one before. And um, I believe when, we first, when I got it in 2017, it, it was at home as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, do, it does hit different. Uh, you know, obviously we would have we gladly took it, took it last week too. Um, but to be able to do that in front of your fans, in front of your family, um, to, to, you know, to get a shirt, uh, to, to put on the hat, to, you know, take pictures with it. Um, it is special. I remember, you know, you, you kind of just uh, stay out on the field and you take pictures, pictures with your, with, your, with your brothers, with your position coach, with different coaches, and um, it's definitely a special moment. So that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do is go out here and, uh, you know, get, get that taken care of. Sunday's locker room was probably the most disappointed I think I've seen you guys all season. And I just wanted to ask, heading into this week, how is the mood right now with all the guys now that we're, you know, it's in the past and you're looking forward to potentially clinching this weekend? Yeah, uh, it's just what uh, JJ broke it down with is just lean on each other. You know, and I think for us, it's just we just stick with each other, lean on each other, trust our coaches, trust our fundamentals, and just watch whatever happened last week and then just focus on what we have this week. Mm. And what you guys got in your, in your room is Curtis Mockins, running backs coach. How, how has he been, you know, in his first year, with you guys. I mean, you guys have been together longer than he's been here. So what has his energy been like for you guys in that room? Uh, it's been good. Um, you know, uh, 
he's he's such a he's such a chill dude. You know, he's he's one of those guys. He's laid back. Um, you know, never never too high, never too down. And uh, I think I think that's a, that's a great quality about him. Um, you know, when 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 things are uh, when things may may be going the wrong way or, or we're getting hit with some adversity, uh, you can talk to him and you can look at him and you look at look at him in his face and he's he's calm. He's 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 talking to you. He's coaching you. Um, he's 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 giving you feedback. Um, it's not like it's not like he's panicking in any type of way. And uh, I think I think that definitely helps us uh, in, in our room for sure. What can a calm coach do for you guys uh, in such an intense environment, like a, like in the middle of an NFL game? Yeah, for sure. It just sets the temperature, you know, just being even keeled during like those high pressure situations or like, you know, when there's high energy or momentum swings, you know, just having someone that you can look to is like, oh, he's cool. So I should be cool, yeah. you know, definitely. And understanding, you know, you guys' role on this team, what, what kind of, well, I'll put it this way, what kind of role does special teams continue to play for this team going forward? Um, I mean, it's all about uh, playing complementary football. Um, the, you know, everybody sees the, you know, the, the kickoff returns for touchdowns or the tackles inside the, inside the 20 or the block punts. Um, but the game of football is really about just the hidden yardage, mm -hmm. um, changing, uh, changing the field position, uh, you know, being, you know, making sure they're five yards back instead of five yards forward because you know, all those things play, play, play into it uh, analytically of uh, you know, their, their chances to score, the chances to get points in that, in that um, scenario. So um, it's, all, it's all about just the hidden yardage and doing the little things that a lot of people don't uh, necessarily pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Daniels is quoted as, as some saying some funny things. I think everyone looks forward to his press conferences every single week. So I can only imagine what it's like to be in the room with you guys. But what is, and I would love for each of you to answer it, the strangest thing that Matt Daniels has said to you where you were like, oh. Now that I'm thinking, there was, I mean, early, earlier on in, uh, in, in our whole process of being together, you know, he was explaining why he was named, why, why he's called Hat and talking about how, uh, you know, you put people in their two back pockets. Mm. <laughs> and like that is stuck with me. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to say. Um, yeah, so that was the one of the things. Mm. <laughs> the hat is 100%. So yeah, that's I, it for me. I know exactly what he means by that. Yeah. Special teams is uh, hopefully going to be a, another highlight of this Minnesota Vikings team. Looking forward to you getting you guys getting a win over Jeff Saturday on Saturday at Look US at that. Bank Stadium. So <laughs> for CJ Ham, Kane Wangwu, Tatum Everett, my name is Gabe Henderson. We will see you all next week. There it is.